folks, this is Aaron Humiston. Thanks for checking out my video. This is gonna be part two of a tutorial going over Manga Studio EX4. In part one, we covered setting up your comic, thumbnailing out a page, setting up your panels, then penciling a panel, and finally adding dialogue balloons. So we covered a lot. I recommend you checking it out before you dive into part two. In part two, we're mostly just gonna focus on inking because inking is really the main reason why I love Manga Studio, and it's the reason why it's my weapon of choice for comic creating. By the time this video is over, I'm sure you will see why. So stick around, and I hope you like what you see. All right, let's do this. Okay, here we have a page from the comic I'm currently working on. It's called Band. As you can see, one of the panels down here is missing. If you want to do something like that where you just have a panel gone and the character's kind of filling up the rest of the page, all you gotta do is click one of the panels and then hit the trash can and it will delete that panel for you. If you're familiar with Photoshop, the layer setup is pretty much the same. When I start inking the character down here, I just make sure that that layer is above all the panels that I have set up. As long as the layer is on top, all the imagery I place on that layer will be on top. Let's go into actually inking a panel. All right, I opened up panel three and I'm gonna zoom in. And as you could see, it used a dot matrix, which isn't what I want. I'd like to see all the detail. So I'm gonna close out of the panel by clicking this close button where it says page up in the top left corner. It'll bring me back to my full page. I'm gonna go to the pencils layer, which is this one right here. I'm gonna right click in that box and there's a tone display settings. I wanna to switch to grayscale view. Now I can go back into panel three and now I have all that detail that I had in my pencils. Now here's one of the main reasons why I love Manga Studio. It's the inking. We're going to add an ink layer and I'm gonna add it for Ace. This, is, this character is named Ace. Click the new layer button up here in my layers and it's gonna ask me to name it. So I'll call it Ace Ink. Now we go to layer type and it's automatically defaulted to raster layer. But then we have the option of going to a vector layer. So whenever I do any of my inks, I use the vector layer. I'll show you the reason why I use that in just a second. So I chose vector layer. I know it's vector layer because it's an orange square for the icon as opposed to a blue square. A blue square is raster. The orange square is a vector layer. Okay, so let's go to the pen tool. And if you click and hold the pen, it'll give you all these different brushes you can use for your pen tool. Just choose any of them and start messing with them. All these pens are fully customizable. We're gonna go to Window, Tool Options, and here's how we can customize our pens. So you can do this with any of your tools. Now with the pen I have, I started off with the Maru pen, but I turned off the stroke in and out. The stroke in and out is the tapering of both sides of the line. So I just turn all of these off because I like letting myself design the line as opposed to letting the computer jump in and make corrections or changes for me. Another cool thing which I love is this little box right here in the corner. Use size as screen value. So what that means is no matter how zoomed in I am on my character, the thickness of the line remains the same. So if I have a character that's really close close up, all I need to do is zoom out and I'll get these nice thick lines. But if there's some detail I wanna get in and get some nice thin lines in, all I need to do is just zoom in. And with the same pressure, now I have these nice thin lines. So it's an option I really love using. And all these lines that I'm placing are all based off of the pressure sensitivity, based off of how hard I push my pen against the screen. The harder I push my pen against the screen, the thicker the line becomes, just like if you were inking by hand. You can adjust the pressure sensitivity, you can adjust the line thickness, you can customize your brush any way you like that feels comfortable for you. But remember, this software is working in conjunction with the Wacom Cintiq that I'm using. I can't really vouch for any sort of other hardware for this program. So here, you can see that the character's gonna get obscured by the character in the foreground here. So I don't really have to worry about being perfect with my lines. So I just sort of block in that area and I really focus my lines on the parts that are going to actually be seen on the page. Any lines that go into this red area are going to be cut off in the final product. So if I close this page, you can see where the border is no lines are going to go past that. So you can draw whatever you like outside of that border and it won't be registered in the final product. Make sure that you don't draw anything important in that area because it's not gonna be seen. 
One thing you need to keep in mind too, we are working in 600 DPI. This is very, very zoomed in. The image may look like a nice size on screen. This is gonna be a lot smaller on paper. So any super thin lines, it's gonna be registered as just not even hair thin, it's gonna be tiny. Any important details that you want to make sure that your viewer sees in your drawing, make sure you give it a little bit of a thickness to it so it doesn't get lost in the final printing. Now, another thing I do in my uh, ink line is I establish my blacks. Sometimes if it's a really small area, I'll just color it in myself. But uh, if it's gonna be a big area, I'll just mark off where the shadow ends and I'll just hit an X there so that I, I know later on that I need to fill in that area. I think we're done. As a final check to make sure my inks are looking right, each panel comes with a default layer layer <laughs> and uh, I'll change the name to white and I'll color it white. What that does is get rid of the pencil so I can see the ink on its own to make sure I'm happy with it. A nice way to check your lines too, there's a button up here that has arrows pointing up and down and arrows pointing left and right. The left and right flips your image horizontally. It's not permanent, it just changes the view of your image. You can always change it back and then you can flip it vertically as well. If you flip your image, sometimes you will catch something that you didn't see before. So once I'm done with my drawing, all I need to do is turn my white back off and I'll, I, I'll have the rest of the image to start inking. The reason why Vector is so awesome, it uses a computer algorithm to define the edges of the line. So I can scale up or scale down my image. All I need to do is go to Edit, Move and Transform, Scale, and your hotkey for that is control T. And now you'll see a red box around my image with nodes for each corner. Just grab one of those nodes and it will scale the image up for you. And as you can see in this little uh, window over here, it's telling me how much I'm scaling it up. So far I scaled it up a little over 200%. So if you wanna get uh, meticulous and punch in numbers for how much you wanna scale this up, you can do it in this window over here. Once I'm happy, you can either click OK down here or just hit the Enter key. If I zoom back into 100%, you can still see that we have a very smooth line. That's what's brilliant about Vector. No matter how much you scale it up or scale it down, it will maintain that smooth line. Let's see what happens when I scale up a raster. I undid that, Control Z, or here's your undo and redo buttons up here. Let's change this to a raster layer. And by doing that, you right click the icon, change layer type. Now here, it automatically sets it to a raster layer. Okay, so now you can see the, the box changed from orange to blue, because now it is a raster layer. Let's try that again and scale this guy up. So I use Control T for transform. I'll use the numbers this time. Hit OK. And now let's zoom in again to 100%. And as you can see, there's that stair stepping. Uh, let's undo. I'll, this time I'll use the arrow. Undo. And now we can see that this is back to an orange color. So that means it's a vector, which is what I want. All right. I hope you're enjoying yourself so far on this tutorial. I hope you found it informative. And like I said in part one, if you're interested in the comic that I'm working on, you can check it out yourself at band-comic.com. There you can check out the first 12 pages of issue one, get a feel for what the comic's like. And if you're interested, you can buy the first four issues or a collection of issues one through four through Indie Planet. One thing I didn't mention was that Band also has a Facebook page which could always use a little extra love. It's facebook.com slash bandcomic. Go check it out. That's where we do most of our updates and we'll be posting the conventions we're going to be selling Band at as well. Not to mention that's where I post a lot of the commissions that I do at the conventions. So there's a lot of fun artwork out there. Go check it out. All right. Like I said before, this is part two of a three-part series. I hope you've been enjoying it so far. I hope you found it informative. If you are in enjoying it. It is always appreciated hitting that like button, commenting, sharing with your friends, your colleagues, even just people you know who might be interested in creating digital comics. If you want to check out my other artwork, I'm on Facebook, DeviantArt, and Tumblr. And of course, if you aren't already, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's going to be a lot more coming down the pipe on this channel, and I would love to have you on board. All right. And with that, I'll wrap it up. Thanks, folks. I will see you all in part three. Have a good one. Bye.